What's the scariest encounter you've had with a total stranger? I was once driving in the country and it was pouring rain in the dead of night. It was raining so hard that I was driving very slowly and I couldn't see any of the signs. This was before GPS. I mean, I had never been in rain this heavy. I had to pull over to the side of the road to try and see the sign to see if I was going in the right direction. I didn't get out of the car due to the rain, so I was craning my neck forward to try and make out where I was, when suddenly the passenger door opened and a man got inside the car, sat down and looked at me. Here in South Africa, there is a fair amount of violent crime and hijackings, so I instinctively started panicking and yelling and screaming at the top of my lungs, flailing my arms to try and do something, anything to stop this guy from attacking me. He started screaming as well in terror and jumped out the car. I quickly leaned over and closed the passenger door and sped off down the road. I was breathing so heavily at this point and trying my best to calm down, nearly in tears. I kept replaying it in my head the whole time and suddenly remember that the man smiled at me. It suddenly dawned on me that it was probably a hitchhiker that I hadn't seen, who thought that I was pulling over to give him a lift, only to be greeted by me screaming and trying to hit him, it was probably his scariest encounter with a stranger as well. Story 2 When I was about 6 years old, I was with my family at an incredibly crowded street festival that we would go to every year. I remember we had stopped to watch a band play for a minute or two, and then my mom, I assumed, took my hand and we continued walking. After a few seconds I realized the hand I was holding was puffy and hot, and my mom's hands were always cool and more slender, so I knew it wasn't her hand I was holding. I looked up to see a woman with long blonde hair and sunglasses grinning down at me. I said, you're not my mom, and she just laughed and said, that's okay, you can come with me anyway. Obviously my mom and dad had realized I was not with them at this point and were freaking out. My dad just happened to look in the exact right direction at the right time and saw this lady leading me away through a break in the crowd. He ran over to us, grabbed her shoulder, and she dropped my hand and disappeared in the crowd. I still can't believe my dad spotted us. It was like shoulder to shoulder people at this thing. Story 3. I dropped my son off at school one morning and then went to the grocery store with my infant daughter. It was so early, there was only one or two other customers. There was an older man with a walker that I didn't really pay too much attention to that kept popping up in the same aisle as us. I got out to my car and put my groceries in and then was putting my daughter in her car seat when the man came up behind me. He asked me a question, and when I turned to answer, he shoved his walker into the back of my legs, pinning me against my car inside the open door. I tried moving around but couldn't go anywhere except forward and he started pushing me down to the floor of my car. I was so scared that once he had me down there he was going to go for my daughter, so I threw myself over her so my whole upper body was in her car seat and wedged myself in tight, trying to cover as much of her as possible. He grabbed me by the hair and was trying to pull me up when someone started honking their car horn. Another mom had been sitting in her car with her own baby asleep and had seen what was happening. Another car pulled up behind mine and the man ran over and got in quickly, obviously never needing the walker. The police were called, but the plates on the car that he left in were stolen, so as far as I know, he was never found. Story 4 When I was around 10 or 11 years old, a friend invited me to a water park. While we were swimming at a wave pool, he found some random kid around our age and decided to tell this kid that the game we were going to play was hold me down in the water. I didn't get that memo, so I thought him and this kid were just trying to drown me. This went on for what felt like an hour of me swimming away and hiding. During the same trip, after we were done with the pool, I got to the changing rooms and there was a couple people in there. There was an old man on the bench that asked me if I wanted him to help me change. I just said no thanks and quickly changed and ran out. Story 5 I was taking a shower in the bathroom of the walkout basement. My three-year-old son was upstairs with my mother eating breakfast. I heard him open the door and I told him, Mommy is in the shower, you have to wait. The door didn't close, but he didn't respond either. So I asked him to go back upstairs and ask Grandma for whatever he needed. Instead, I see a shadow and an outline of a hand touching the shower curtain and realize that there is an adult in the bathroom, not my son. I scream and punch through the shower curtain. I don't think I connected, but I heard the man run out anyway. As fast as I could, I jumped out and grabbed a towel to check on my son and mom. At the same time, my mom was coming downstairs to see if I was okay from the scream. The man never went upstairs and they didn't even know it had happened. The walkout basement door and window were open. I called the police and they didn't find him, just my empty wallet about a block away. They did come back to me a few weeks later to let me know that they caught a guy in the area who was sexually assaulting women at gunpoint, and they think it was the same guy. I have never been so scared in my life. The most visceral part for me was knowing he was just standing quietly in the bathroom while I talked to him like he was my son. Honestly, I don't know why, but that creeps me out the most. It felt really violating at the time. Story 6 I was in high school and worked at a truck stop. One night, a trucker came in and stared at me for a long time. Wherever I moved to, he was staring me down. 
I told him that if he needed anything that he would need to come to the counter and order it. He just grunted and kept staring. I'm not a small person, and at that time I was in football, wrestling, and track. I was also at the gym six days a week. I was 190 pounds of muscle and had teenager hormones. But the vibes I was getting from this guy were making me nervous. I called up my other coworker and told them I was going to be in the freezer for a while. So I was stocking the freezers and coolers for a while and then went to the bathroom. As I entered the bathroom, the trucker jumped up and walked in behind me and just stood in there while I took a piss and washed my hands. As soon as I got out, I grabbed the trash bags and beelined it outside to take care of the trash at the pumps until he left. My coworker asked me why the trucker kept following me after I finally came in. I had no idea why. He never said anything, didn't order anything, just filled up his semi-truck and creeped on me. I've never been as creeped out by a person as I was with that guy. Story 7. I was at a storage depot with my ex picking up some stuff. Suddenly, and without warning, this oldish guy approaches out of nowhere and starts a conversation with my ex. I'm in the unit at the time, so it's possible he didn't know I was there, but the clipped tone and monosyllabic answers from my ex were enough for me to know he was making her feel uncomfortable. That's when I heard him say, don't worry, I'm not going to sexually assault you or anything. Like literally two or three sentences into a conversation with a total stranger, he felt this would be a reassurance. So I stepped out of the unit, making my presence known by moving some stuff around in the hall, and his whole demeanor changed. Somewhere between contrition and aggression that I dared insert myself into whatever the heck he thought this was. My ex stayed back while I kept the old bastard's attention on me, and he took me to task for calling him mate. A common thing British people do when they don't know someone's name, saying it was rude and disrespectful to a stranger. I responded with, as rude and disrespectful as talking about sexual assault to a young woman you thought was alone? He shuffled away, mumbling something about knowing the management, leaving us both a little shook. To this day, I have no idea what his deal was, but it was clear that he wasn't used to being confronted like that. God knows what he would have done if my ex had been alone. Story 8. I was 16 and sitting at a train station with my mother. Some man came over and started talking to her. After a while, I looked at the clock and informed my mother that we needed to go because our train was about to arrive. He flew up from the seat and started screaming at me and wanted to fight me. My mother was confused and tried to explain to him that I was her daughter and that we really did need to leave. He just continued screaming, which of course made teenage me scream back at him. She had to pull me away from there. I never understood what made him see red like that. All I did was inform my mother our train was coming and we needed to leave. I will never forget it. Story 9. When Ghostbusters 2 came out, I wanted to see it. My mom took me to the local theater, I think I was around 9 years old. I needed to use the bathroom, so I ran down the small hall and turned the corner when I saw a much older man come out of the bathroom. When he saw me, he stopped and went back in. When I didn't move, he opened the door, peeking his head and arm out, motioning me to come towards him. I probably looked like a deer in headlights and I didn't move. I was frozen until he said, come on, come on in. Panic rushed over me and I ran back towards my mom who said I was pale white. She quickly left the theater with me and went home. Stranger Danger worked out that day in the 80s. I can still picture him, or at least the picture my brain made of this memory. Story 10. I was the only passenger in a train car in Europe late at night. A disheveled man, wild hair and beard, and tagged sweater, entered the car and started pacing up and down the aisle. He was talking to himself in a language I couldn't understand. Every few trips, he would stop in front of me and yell at me in whatever language he spoke. I would try to respond, but he didn't know English any more than I understood whatever language he was speaking. He would eventually give up yelling at me and would go back to pacing the aisle and talking to himself. This went on for hours. Really wish I could have recorded him back then so I could eventually find someone to translate it. Story 11. I was about 10 years old and was getting back home from the park with my sister. She, being the stubborn younger, I need no older sister playing mom to me, sibling walked purposely 20 meters ahead so nobody would even think we were together. She rounds the corner and I hear a blood-curdling scream. I never covered 20 meters so fast in my life. I round the corner and there's a man, holding my sister by her throat, dragging her into an open car parked nearby. When he sees me advancing and yelling incomprehensibly, I honestly don't know what I yelled, I was scared out of my wits, and he realizes there's two of us. He drops her, jumps into the car, and drives off. She had fingerprint-shaped bruises on her throat for days. Story 12. I was walking home from the bus stop after school when I was about 15 years old. It was really not far, but there were construction workers drinking on the side of the road. One of them got up and followed me home, calling me suggestive things. I honestly can't remember what, but his intentions were clear. This was about 200 meters from home, so I sprint home. We have an automatic gate, so I realize he will catch me if I wait for it to open or he'll follow me in. So I climb over it, which is normally not easy, but that day I flew over. I was really shaken up. 
For me, this story is actually about what happened next, which is that I called my mom, who had an intense job. She dropped everything at work, came home immediately, made me hot chocolate and pancakes. We had a long conversation where she validated my feelings and fear. She's the best. Story 13. I was 19 years old, and I was sleeping with the window open since it was a hot summer night. My boyfriend and I were both knocked out, but all of a sudden I wake up, just opened my eyes but didn't get up, and I had a horrible gut feeling. It was just an overwhelming feeling that I was being watched. I turn to my side and I see someone's head sticking in from the window. Needless to say, I had a heart attack, and as soon as they heard me get up, they left. After that, I learned to always be careful and close my windows at night. Story 14. An older woman approached me on campus asking me to take her to this spot in town since she doesn't know where it is. I say no. It was a new city for me too and she gave me weird vibes. She insists it's right around the corner so it's not that far. Which was weird because so suddenly she knew where it is when she hadn't known before. I refuse and she hesitates and then walks off. An older guy asks if she needs directions only for her to walk by him. I just thought it was strange but I didn't really think about it. The next week I check my phone when I get to class and someone posted an article about how this older woman, who was tied to multiple cases of human trafficking, was just caught by the police in a nearby town. From the description alone, I knew it was the woman I had talked to. Story 15 My mother was a lifelong drug abuser, but in the early days she merely had a habit. As time went on, she became more unscrupulous, stealing from dealers and such. One day, mom asks me to give her a ride to a friend's house. This should have set off red flags for me, but for some reason didn't, and sure enough, as soon as we arrive, the dealer comes outside and yells at her, but promptly brandishes a gun and points it at me. I figured from context clues that if he couldn't stop her directly, maybe he could hit her where it hurts by killing her son? I started yelling back, though I don't remember exactly what I said, but the next step involved putting the car in reverse and speeding the hell out of there. Story 16. When I was a young girl, my mom would take me to see every Harry Potter movie in theaters when they came out. I kind of grew up with them at the same age as the characters, as did many 90s born millennials. This had to be the second or third in the series as it was around 2003. About halfway into the movie, I need to go to the bathroom. On my way back from the bathroom, just outside the door to the theater, there stands a scraggly, dirty-looking man with a blue ball cap. His hand is extended outwards to me as if I'm supposed to grab it. He asks me, do you want to come with me, little girl? The heaviest pit dropped in my tummy, and I felt a general energy of extreme danger. Thankfully, my mom had been very diligent in teaching me some stranger danger street smarts, so I just ran. Ran as fast as I could back into the theater and planted my ass back in my seat beside my mom. She could tell something had shaken me bad. She kept asking what was wrong and I wouldn't tell her. By the time I did tell her, a half hour or more had passed. She took me to the theater staff, where a 16-year-old girl listened to my story and phoned the police. The police did not find him on sight. I waited too long to tell anyone. I have a lot of guilt and regret towards not saying something about it as soon as it happened. I worry that some other little girl went with him that day as a result of my inaction. Of course, I had some sense of his deprived and disgusting motives then. But now that I'm older, I know that he most likely planned to do very disgusting and pedophilic things. What does a 40-year-old man want to do with an 8-year-old girl? I will never forget his face. Story 17 When my daughter turned 1, we went on a trip to Hawaii. When we first were sitting in the airport waiting to check in for our tickets, a man approached me and started commenting on how beautiful my daughter was. Fine, thanks, but it didn't stop there. He stood over me and continued to try and touch her and ask about her age, birthday, favorite things, where we were going, etc. I refused to answer, but he refused to move, and we were trapped. My husband came back and the man stepped away pretty quick. I told airport security, but they didn't do anything. We got to our gate, and a few minutes later, the same man sat and positioned himself where he could watch our daughter. If we moved seats, he kept her in his sight. I mentioned it to the gate agent who brushed it off again. We got on the plane, and he managed to also be on the plane in a seat he could keep an eye on her. He kept smiling at her and getting up to walk the aisles and pass her. My husband got up and he came and said in baby talk, I found out where you're going, didn't I? I reported it to the flight attendant who was not messing around. He was forced to switch seats and not allowed to get up again. Upon landing, there were people waiting for him that he was forced to go with. Security or airport staff, I don't know. But we didn't see him again. I am 100% certain our daughter would have been kidnapped or trafficked if we had not been on high alert and reported him. That was two years ago and I still remember how terrified I was. What's the scariest encounter you've had with a total stranger? Share your story in the comments.